One of the first decisions you're faced with starting a Monster Hunter game is which weapon should you pick. Out of a choice of 14, that can be quite an overwhelming decision to make at the starting line. So let's simplify that and help you make your choice so you can get to hunting. I'm Lighted Up Dan. The sort of content I love to produce aims to reduce the overwhelm and unknown of the Monster Hunter games. You may have caught some of my event roundups or even Wilds coverage. If you haven't yet, there is something there for everyone. Very quickly, a massive thank you for really turning up and getting us to around 80% of unsubscribed viewers on the channel with the majority of you returning if you enjoy the videos do subscribe i'm trying to get that down to 50 percent with that said let's jump in starting us off with the poster weapon of the monster hunter series the great sword a massive two-handed weapon with slow devastating single strike blows it emphasizes positioning placement and timing demanding pretty good monster knowledge which can already place it in the quite advanced category i tend to think of it as an advanced weapon for this reason, effortlessly allowing you to dish out damage with draw attacks, or individually charging the blows leading into its most powerful attack, the true charge slash. Higher risk for higher reward, but the draw style is actually very simple to use, and can allow you to adopt a hit and run style, dishing out good damage without the commitment of these long charging combos. It also comes with some defensive capabilities, enabling the hunter to tackle through attacks, giving you hyper armor. Fantastic for keeping your combo strings going, or just avoiding getting knocked on your your ass. You can actually throw it up in front of you and just block attacks too. A fantastic panic button when you don't really have any other options, you're not mid combo string to do a tackle, etc. This is a tricky one because on the one hand, if you adopt that draw attack playstyle, hit and run tactics, you just let out a swing and then move away. This can be a tremendous choice for beginners, not to mention that it doesn't have any gauges or meters to manage. It's just about you, your weapon, and bonking the monster. On the other hand, the weapon demands great monster knowledge, as your positioning, placement, and timing needs to be impeccable. It's a very common experience that you just keep getting interrupted and knocked on your ass whilst trying to learn Greatsword. Give it a spin against some early monsters that you're comfortable fighting, take it to the training area, see how it feels for you. Next is one of the most popular weapons, and for a good reason, it is super flashy and fun, the Longsword. A far-reaching, quick-hitting weapon with easy enough combo inputs to pick up and play with, giving you a good mix of mobility, damage, and reach right off the bat. It's often recommended to beginners for this reason. Before you really understand how any of the mechanics like the spirit gauge or the iframes works, you can pick it up, use the basic combo strings, and do well. As you strike the monster, you will fill up a spirit gauge. This can be increased to three different levels, and is consumed by doing specific powerful special attacks, boasting some of the best defensive capabilities in the game, by dodging the attacks entirely with all of the invulnerability frame moves you've got, providing very animated a flashy means to dodge attacks completely, whilst also countering and dishing out some really tasty damage. It has a very high skill ceiling here. As you navigate filling up your spirit gauge, spending it using various special attacks, building it back up with perfect time dodges, it becomes this beautiful flow, this rhythm, this dance. I agree with the popular consensus that this is a fantastic choice for beginners, possibly even the best one. The combo strings aren't complex and don't require any specific order or process. The loop is very easy to understand even from the get-go, and even the in-game information provided makes sense. That's how you know it's easy to pick up. I hope Capcom do a better job in Wilds. Take it to the training area, familiarize yourself with the spirit gauge mechanics, the spirit blade combos, and the special attacks that you can do which consume the gauge. Next, we have another very popular beginner recommendation, Sword and Shield. Touted as a weapon with a very low skill floor and a very high skill ceiling, providing good mobility, dodging capabilities, a shield block, and high high damage uptime with its combos. A hunter is able to pick up this weapon, use the standard Y combo string, or a standard B combo string, and actually contribute to the hunt being very effective. You also have full movement speed and virtually no sheathing animation, enabling you to run around at your leisure. The shield may not be the best block in the game, but it's still a block and an excellent panic button. And this is before we even dive into all of the things you can do with backstepping and the perfect rush combo, one of the highest damage moves in the game out of all of the weapons. The backstep has some of the largest, if not the largest, iframes in the game, I forget off the top of my head. It's fantastic for dodging through attacks, which can be used both for offense and defense. In world, I consider the sword and shield to be the ultimate weapon. It is insane. That aside, for beginners to pick up and play, it can feel quite wishy-washy. It does move away from you quite quickly. But once you get a grasp of that and how you can use your basic combo strings, much before you start integrating perfect rush and all the rest, you'll have a brilliant time picking this up as a new player. Mess around 
around with the combo loops in the training area, both the Y attack string and the B attack string. I mostly use the stationary B attack combo in between all of my back steps and perfect rushes, a super quick and powerful three hit combo. Next, we've got another weapon that very frequently gets recommended as a fantastic choice for beginners, the dual blades, giving you very simple, easy to understand combo strings, rapid strikes for burst damage, and phenomenal mobility. Pick this weapon up, use the Y combo strings, use the B combo strings, you will be effective. Landing strikes builds up the demon mode gauge, a powered up stance where your mobility is increased and your attacks are more powerful. You get a Naruto run, Datebayo, and the actual attack animations have changed as well, increasing the number of hits and the total damage as well. This is effectively the weapon's true form as you're going to want to be in demon mode for as long as possible. It's the first weapon to really introduce stamina management as demon mode constantly depletes your stamina. Some of the more powerful combos you can execute do plant you in place and have quite a long animation. Getting a feel of when and where you can use these adds a little bit of complexity to it, but other than that you're only really managing your stamina, the rest is pretty straightforward. Get in the monster's face, slash it to ribbons, and dodge when you don't want to get knocked on your ass. It also has some of the flashiest combos and aerial attacks you can do in the game. The heavenly blade dancers, mwah, chef's kiss. An absolutely fantastic choice for beginners, this will enable you to get a feel and flow of the game and combat, whilst also very easily contributing and dealing damage. Take it to the training area, get a feel for the flow of the combos, and unleash your inner Naruto Date Bio. Next up, we've got another weapon with huge single strike damage similar to the Greatsword, but with very low commitment and really good mobility. I'm of course talking about the hammer. Very simple, straightforward, easy to understand combo strings. The commitment to damage ratio is massive for hammer. Straightforward and effective Y combos. It also has a slow, very powerful consecutive combo that you can do during a topple or stagger. The big bang attack. Delivering some of the strongest KO in the game will mean you'll stagger the monsters a lot too. Charging functionality that alters which attack you let out depending on what level of charge you're at with excellent ledge work too. One of the downsides is the range you do need to get in the face of the monster. Other than the uppercut charge attack, you don't really have any gap closers, so you're going to have to get comfortable getting in the fight. I cannot sing the praises of this weapon enough. It is super fun and fantastic for beginners. Low commitment, high damage, high stagger. By only getting a few hits off here and there with your charge attacks or the beginning of your combo strings or what have you, you will be contributing and you will be effective. Nip over to the training area, give it a bash a little bit, see how you feel. If you're struggling to get enough bonk for your strong, it may mean that you need some extra honk. Next is the Hammer's musical sibling, the Hunting Horn. Very similar in its low commitment, high single hit damage. A mechanically very complex weapon with multiple attack inputs, like five, that adjust their behavior depending on where you are in the combo string, how you're holding the left stick. There's quite a lot going on. It's super fun and dishes out a load of KO as well, landing you staggers all over the place. Definitely giving Hammer a run for its money with bonking. Your attack inputs represent individual notes. By storing up combinations of these notes, you can perform the melodies giving you buffs. Most of them are group-wide buffs, making it the only intrinsic support weapon in the game. Other than using the support ammo functions on the bow guns, that is inherent too. With the self-improvement buff that all hunting horns have, your movement speed with a weapon drawn is the best in the game, I believe. Demon mode on dual blades might be slightly faster, I'm not too sure, but it's excellent, like it's really good. Through the power of dutes and honks, you will achieve many bonks, which is indeed extremely strong. While the weapon is super fun and can unleash a devastating amount of damage. Not to mention that it's great providing support for you and your teammates. I don't think it's a great choice for beginners as one of your first weapons. Maybe cut your teeth on something else first, then come back to it when you're a little bit more experienced, you've got some more monster knowledge, to fully unleash your honks and bonks. This one firmly goes in the hard for new players category. If you still insist on starting with the hunting horn, I would highly recommend watching a guide, I've done one myself, and heading over to the training area you're getting in loads of practice with the different note attacks so you can get a better understanding of the core weapon mechanics and some of the attack loops. Ah, the first of the properly shielded weapons. No hate, sword and shield. The ultimate defense, but also the ultimate attack. 
This is the lance, a weapon that allows you to get toe-to-toe, face-to-face -to -face with the monster, guarding against its onslaughts whilst countering at the same time. Very simple inputs to understand, there's a three-hit jab combo either laterally or upwards, which you can kind of mix and match it somewhat modular. You can just hold down block, raising your shield against any frontal attacks. The true beauty of the weapon, which gives it this boxing feel to it, is the counter guards, allowing you to block and riposte immediately, leading straight into your jabbing combos, allowing for, but also also demanding from you very high uptime. Folks who think that the weapon is this boring, turtling, jabbing weapon don't understand Lance. It is a highly, if not the most, aggressive weapon in the game. Whilst your mobility with the weapon drawn is very low, you do move slowly around. It has some excellent maneuvering skills that more than make up for this. These aren't easy to get familiar with though. They take a lot of practice and can feel quite clunky at first. All in all, you've got the best block in the game. You can go straight into full combos directly out of your counter guards. You have that extra breathing room, that space from having a shield you can put up. And the combo inputs are as easy as one, two, three, take an arrow to the knee. This is a fantastic choice for new players and beginners. Absolutely give the Lance a go. Just be mindful that it has a tremendously high skill ceiling. So while you may start with poke, 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 it ain't gonna stay that way. You'll be going into power guards into your uppercut counter, doing the charging jousting attack with that powerful finishing blow, maneuvering yourself with your guard dashes with absolute finesse. Yes, it's going to be sick. Next, we've got the rooting, tooting, freedom-loving variant of the Lance, the Gun Lance. Drawing a few similarities with the Lance, it has the joint best block in the game, and you have access to that triple thrust combo. It doesn't have any counter attacks, and you can't go between blocking and attacking as easily as fluidly. It features shelling, allowing you to do a variety of attacks, individually popping shots off in between your pokes, charging them up individually, and even unloading a full magazine during your combo using the full burst attack. As well as its shelling, it really differentiates itself from Lance with all of the different slap attacks that you've got. You're swinging this thing around with wide slashes, overhead slashes that can deal a tremendous amount of damage. However, they're not the easiest of things to get used to. The combo inputs can be a little bit finicky. At the end of these slapping, swinging attacks, you can unleash a worm state cannon, ticking for a lot of damage before exploding on the monster part. With reloading your worm state cannon, your shelling, learning the different combo inputs, it's not as straightforward as Lance. Quite a few more moving parts and other things to be mindful of and manage. An absolutely devastating weapon that can dish out so much pain. But another one I would put in the hard for beginners list. The only part of it that isn't complex is the guarding and the poking attacks. Everything else outside of that mechanically, the combo inputs, which shell and gun lance type you should use. What's the difference between them? There's quite a bit more going on. Once again, if you insist on using it, you can do. Just make sure you go over to the train area and practice with it. Maybe catch a guide or two, I've made one myself, and ease yourself in on some monsters that you're comfortable with, like Dota Gamma. Go murder that thing. Next, we've got a weapon that transforms between a two-handed giant axe to a two-handed giant sword. This weapon must have been some sort of inspiration for the Bloodborne trick weapons. The axe form features a long reach and hard-hitting attacks, with actually better mobility than the two-handed sword form, which is weird because the sword looks smaller than the axe. It's got various combos, including its wild swing where you can charge up the axe, and a powerful morph attack as well, putting you into the sword mode. Attacking in sword form uses up its switch gauge, and landing the hits fills up the amped gauge. By filling up the amped gauge, your sword attacks gain the weapon's file effect effectively doing extra damage. So you find yourself managing several different things at the same time and switching between two different forms, dishing out a ton of damage in sword form, building up this gauge. When fully amped with the bonus damage, you can also do the zero sum discharge attack, which is a very powerful finisher. Tons of ticks with a big explosion at the end. And once you've run out of switch gauge, you go back into axe form until you build that back up. Not the easiest thing to pick up and play with. Your mobility is reduced. There's quite a lot you need to manage and be mindful of. It's super fun and really damaging, don't get me wrong. Then it's understanding the difference between impact files, elemental files, how elemental works in world and how it's kind of sucky. I would say this is going to be hard for beginners and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as your first choice. Take it to the training area, watch a guide or two, I've made one for switch axe. Give the attack loops a go in axe form, give the attack loops in sword form a go. Mess around with it all, maybe you'll pick it up and it'll be fine for you. Oh boy. <laughs> 
Should we just skip this one and say, no, it's too hard for beginners? Next weapon. Fine, fine. Up next, we've got another weapon that could have inspired Bloodborne, the Charge Blade. Transforming between a bigger sword and shield and a giant two-handed axe. This weapon really takes the cake in terms of having so many things to manage and be mindful of. And having complex combo inputs and process order. In the sword and board mode, you've got pretty good mobility, including some good maneuvering attacks. And your attacks charge up the weapon. You've also got access to the shield, giving you a very good guard. Through your various sword attacks by charging up the weapon, you will be building up file energy, which can then be stored to give you your files. It can also be transformed into its axe form, which makes you slower, but gives you a bigger reach and tremendous damage. Once you have your files stored up, you can actually use them to charge up your shield, making your block stronger and your axe attacks even more powerful. Once your shield is charged up, you can even then charge up your sword, giving your sword swings additional file damage. With your shield charged, you'll then want to reload your files, so building up charge with your sword and then storing them, which you can then fire out all in one go with this big attack called the SAED, Super Amped Element Discharge, or one by one using the Element Discharge combo string. You can also transform it into a pizza cutter by enabling Savage Axe mode. The Sword Charge, Shield Charge, and Savage Axe mode all have separate individual timers, and all require a specific process and order. This is a super fun weapon, it's absolutely devastating, and incredibly versatile. It is not, however, beginner friendly. At any given moment, there's a ton of stuff to manage, the combo inputs aren't straightforward at all, and the process order is very important. Hard very hard for new players. Maybe do not pick this one initially and instead opt for the hammer to bonk. Jokes aside, it's just a very overwhelming weapon to pick up and play with. Even if you just want to button mash and attack in sword and board form, it'll overcharge and your swings will start bouncing off the monster and you just don't know how to deal with it. As a new player, if you insist on the charge blade, head over to the training area and get yourself familiar with the different forms. Get a familiarity of the process order with charging up the files, charging up the shield, etc. A guide may also be beneficial. I've done a charge blade guide. It's comprehensive. It'll tell you everything you need to know, but I'd really pick something else. Next, we've got the acrobatic monk play style and the only aerial weapon in the game, the inset glaive. Very powerful with fast strikes and good combo strings. Simple enough to understand either with Y or with B or a combination of the two and the ability to take to the skies and navigate in the air. To the disdain of some, the ground combos are the most powerful attacks and where your focus should be. The aerial attacks are mostly for maneuverability and for style. But damn, they are really good for keeping out of the monster's way and for repositioning yourself. You can also get mounts very easily from the aerial attacks too, another huge plus. The inputs aren't difficult, the combo strings are very straightforward, the aerial moves feel a little bit wishy-washy and you can maybe move a little bit too quickly. It takes some getting used to in the same way that the sword and shield does. A huge component of the weapon is the kinsect it comes with, that giant bug. You'll aim at various monster parts and fire the kinsect over to have a little chomp, a little little nibble and extract an essence from that monster part. These are color coded. You're aiming for one, two, three, red, white, and orange, which give you corresponding buffs. Getting all three gives you a large bonus to attack and defense and should be what you're aiming for for the most part. Quite a bit of micromanagement as that goes on a timer as well. You've got the slinger ammo charges, which is on a separate timer as well to boost your insect. There's just quite a lot going on. I don't necessarily think this is hard for beginners, but I definitely don't think it's easy either. It can be a good choice to take out and play giving you some of the best mobility in the game and allowing you some breathing room to pick up other mechanics. This is going to be somewhere in the middle. I would still advise some of the easier ones earlier on in the video, but if you want to give it a spin, watch a guide. I've made one. Go to the training area, have a play. The last three to go are the ranged weapons, which I know really appeal to a large group of folks. First of which is the light bow gun, giving you excellent mobility whilst you run around gunning the monster down. These weapons come with quite a bit of setup before you even step into a hunt, which can be very overwhelming. What mods to take, what ammo types you want on your weapons, etc. However, if you were to just pick up a light bow gun and go out and play, use some of the standard ammo like normal one, normal two, what have you, and just point and shoot. In that regard, it's very simple and straightforward, and I recommend it. Being able to be mid-ranged with a monster using a ranged weapon gives you a certain amount of space, some breathing room, in an already very difficult, very overwhelming game. 
I totally get the appeal of ranged weapons for beginners. I get it. A non-trivial amount of people gravitate towards them. You can use this special attack called Wyvern Fire, which either places a mine down, or if you've equipped the mod for it, allows you to use it as a counter attack, further playing into the weapon's good mobility. Out of the three, Light Bowgun is going to be a pretty good choice for beginners. At first, whilst you're getting used to it, I would stick to the standard ammos, rather than something like piercing or sticky or whatever. That's going to be more complex and further down the line. Enjoy the excellent mobility it provides, including the evading reload if you equip the mod for it. I would still say go for one of the easier options mentioned earlier on, but if you want to go ranged, this is a great choice. Next is the tankier fortress version of the weapon with a longer range as standard, the heavy bow gun. This differentiates itself from the light bow gun as you have much worse mobility. Your movement speed is a crawl, but you generally have access to heavier hitting ammos and a different array of mods you can put onto the weapon. This one does not have the evading reload. So many meta builds revolve around this weapon. Insane damage with spread three. Non-stop stickies for constant KOs. These take quite a lot of crafting and planning. Out the gate, the weapon is going to feel quite clunky and you're going to feel like a target. It has some pretty cool special functions as well. It can either turn into a machine gun called Wyvern Heart, which does more damage the longer you do it for, where depleting the whole bar will deal a ton of damage towards the end. Or it can have the Wyvern Snipe, turns it into a sniper for an explosive round. Definitely a fun weapon with lots of versatility to it, depending on how you want to build it out, leading you down various paths to get specific weapons for specific builds. This is going to be a hard to play for beginners, for newcomers. I wouldn't recommend it. As I said, if you have to go range, I would go light bow gun. If you insist on this, maybe try using the shield mods on it so you've got some guarding capabilities. Familiarize yourself with the different ammo types, which one you want to use on what weapons. There'll be quite a bit of prep work. Last, but definitely not least, this is one of the most powerful weapons in the game. Capable of outperforming everything else, we have the bow. Providing excellent mobility and mid-ranged attacks, this thing can dish out some damage. There are various things to manage, whether you're using code coatings or you're not, which coatings to use, what they do, and you're also slapped with the toughest stamina management in the game. All of the basic combo strings are pretty straightforward, there's no complex inputs. It's as simple as point and shoot. Hunters can charge up their individual attacks if they wish to do so, however rapidly firing attacks generally seems to work better. In terms of pick up, take it out, go play with it, you're going to have a great time with this as a beginner. It's a great choice. However, there is quite a bit to manage and to get to grips with. Even if it was only the stamina and management, that would be enough. That's really tricky to deal with and it takes quite a bit of practice. But learning your positioning and the effective range, which attack combo strings are more effective for you, what to use when, how to manage your stamina effectively. <sighs> it's a tricky one. It could be both. Head to the training area, give it a play around and take it out on a monster you're comfortable with. See what it's like for you and what pain points you encounter. Again, out of the range ones, I must say I advise light bow gun over the others. But if you're adamant on taking out a bow as a newcomer, go for it, Hawkeye. You're super Superpower can be carting quicker than anyone else. I'm kidding. I'm sure you'll have a blast with it. Which weapons have you tried out so far? What are you thinking of playing? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. As mentioned at the start, a massive thank you for really turning up and getting us to around 80% of unsubscribed viewers on the channel. With the majority of you returning, if you enjoyed the videos, do subscribe. We're a mature, inclusive community that hunts together across multiple platforms, across multiple games. Come and join the Discord. We'd love to have you. I also do open sessions during the live streams over on Twitch and here. Yeah, I will leave all of these links for you in the description. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you in the new world.